There's a credit crunch going on right now in New Zealand and it's getting much harder for both first home buyers and investors to get their mortgages approved. Hi, I'm Ed McKnight, economist here at Opus Partners, and in today's video, we're gonna break this down and tell you exactly what this means and some practical steps you can take to give yourself the best shot at getting that mortgage approved. Let's start by looking at the impact and what's happening with the banks. So ever since December, where some new legislation that we're going to talk about in a minute came in, we have seen the number of mortgages decline. It's gone from about 36% of mortgages being approved or mortgage applications being approved down to about 30%. Now that might not seem like a lot, but it's about 20% less mortgages being approved than was otherwise the case. And in fact, mortgage brokers are saying it is much, much harder to get these types of loans approved. In fact, almost 95%, 90 to 95% of mortgage brokers are saying it is much harder for mortgages to get approved right now. Now, what does that mean for you? Well, if the banks are less willing to lend, it's much harder to purchase property right now. And that's why you're seeing a whole heap of news articles coming up in the media right now with headlines like, mortgage application declined for a $187 trip to Kmart. Now you might be wondering, well, what's behind this? So the bank's being stingy and just trying to get me to stop eating KFC or getting takeaway coffee? Well, it all comes down to an updated law called the Triple CFA. This is the Credit Contracts and Consumer Finance Act. And when this was updated, out came an updated responsible lending code. Now, if you've been following the media stories, you would have heard both of these, but perhaps not know exactly what it does when they're assessing your mortgages. Well, what the updated codes really say is that when the banks assess a mortgage, they've got to be really careful to make sure that you can afford it. Now, that makes a hell of a lot of sense. We don't want to see a whole heap of Kiwis that are being forced to sell their homes at mortgagee sales because they are stuck with loans that they can't actually afford. But where this has potentially gone too far is into the degree that banks have to go now in order to be able to see whether you can afford something or not. Here is exactly what has changed and exactly how the banks have changed their process when assessing your mortgage application. So previously, they'd take your income, minus off your living expenses, minus off your new loan costs, and then you've got your uncommitted monthly income. That's the money left over. And if this was above zero, that was a pretty good indication that your mortgage application would be approved. Not a guarantee, but certainly a good indication. Now, when they were assessing this, they would also look at your loan costs and they'd test it under some other conditions. Things like a higher interest rate, less rental income and higher rental expenses if you're going to treat this as an investment property. And what that really did was say, in the worst case scenario, worst case, interest rates go up, you don't have a tenant for a while, your expenses on your maintenance for your investment property, that's a bit up. Could you still afford the mortgage if some bad stuff happened? In the worst case scenario. And if the answer was yes, hey, you'd probably get that mortgage approved. What has changed now is how they treat your expenses. So before there was a lot more leeway, now there is almost no leeway. So what I mean by that is previously, if you went out to a nice restaurant, if you went and spent $200 at Kmart, those would be treated as discretionary expenses. The banks would understand that if interest rates rise, if you don't have a tenant for a bit, you'll cut back on that. You won't spend $200 at Kmart. You won't go out to a really fancy restaurant. And because of that, that assess your mortgage under those conditions. What's happened now is that those expenses are not being treated as discretionary. What that means is that the banks are going through line by line through your bank statements to calculate what your expenses actually are. In fact, one of the major banks has introduced a piece of software that scans your bank statements and puts each expense into one of 20 categories. Now, what that's doing is saying there is no room here for discretionary expenses anymore. That's basically saying that if you go out to a fancy restaurant, that that's your lifestyle and you still need to be able to afford to do that if interest rates were two or three percentage points higher. Now, the effect of that is that when you submit your bank statements as part of your mortgage application, they want to see you living on a higher interest rate. It doesn't matter that you're going to have a mortgage approved for, say, 4%. They might want to see you living as if interest rates were already 6%. So essentially, you've already got to live as if the worst case scenario was already happening, as if those test conditions we talked about, where you've got a higher interest rate, less rental income, whether those were already happening. It doesn't matter that, hey, you could trim back on some of your expenses. 
So now that I've scared you a bit, you're probably thinking, Ed, I'm about to apply for a mortgage. What do I do in this case? Look, for now, here's the advice. Live as if the mortgage that you're going to apply for was 6%. Live as if those interest rates were a bit high and speak with your mortgage broker to figure out what that actually looks like in your specific situation. But here's an example. Let's say that you're renting at the moment and you're paying $500 a week between you and your partner. Well, let's say you then want to take out a mortgage, a 600k mortgage at 4%. Your payments per week on a 30-year loan term would be about $660 per week. Now, if you were living as if that interest rate was higher at 6%, well, then you'd have to live as if you were paying $830 per week towards your mortgage. That's $170 per week higher. So now you're probably thinking, well, how am I ever going to do that? Because that is a significant amount of money, almost $200 per week. There are two things I'd say. The first is that you've got to remember when you apply to the bank, you're going to give them three months worth of your statements. So you only have to do this for a three month period before you can revert back to living as you were previously. The second thing that I would encourage you to look at if you are looking to trim back some of those expenses is it's all of those ones that you're actually reading about in the media. Your Netflix, your Disney Plus, your Neon, drinking less takeaway coffee, decreasing the amount of times you go to McDonald's, and even some first home buyers are deciding that they're not going to go out with friends temporarily. Now this is not the stuff I want to tell you to do. The reason I say that is I don't want to tell anybody that no you can't go out and buy KFC, no you can't go out and have that takeaway coffee. But in some instances, for those 20% of purchasers who wouldn't have their mortgage approved anymore, then this might be what you've got to do for three months to get your bank statements in check and get that mortgage approved. Now, some people have suggested that the banks have become the fun police. They're trying to cancel KFC, cancel coffee, and stop you watching Keeping Up With The Kardashians on Netflix. Look, that's not actually the case. The nature of your spending, whether it's on KFC or coffee, the bank's not actually looking at. What they care about is the amount of spending under the new ways that they're assessing these mortgage applications. So it doesn't matter that it was on KFC as opposed to normal groceries, it's the amount of spending that counts, not what you're actually spending it on. Now of course there is a great farce of this all that you, I, and the banks know that after three months you're going to go back to normal. You're going to start spending like you always were. You're not going to live as if your mortgage interest rate is 6% because hey, it's not 6%, it might be 3.65 or 4%. But you've just got to do it for now in order to get that mortgage approved. Now I keep using those words though, for now. So how long is this going to last? Look, my expectation and the expectation of us here at Opus Partners and Catalyst Financial is that we will start to see the banks loosen up and some of this regulation might get reworded or clarified. In fact, the Minister of Consumer Affairs, David Clark, has said that he's asked the regulators like Treasury and the Reserve Bank to bring forward an investigation into whether the banks are implementing their legislation and regulation like they expected. Now that's code for saying, hey look, perhaps we've gone a bit far, let's start to roll things back and encourage people to get into their first home or purchase an investment property. My key message there is, while it might be tough to get lending right now, January and February 2022, that might not be the case in three to six months and even after that. So the tide may start to change. Now, if you want to learn more about how to be a successful property investor right here in New Zealand, first of all, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We release new videos every Wednesday at 10 a.m. And also subscribe to the Property Academy podcast because every single day we release a brand new episode to teach you something new about how to invest in property right here in New Zealand.